it's that time again. Time to turn some broken old tech into uh, recyclable chunks. So what we have here is, I believe this is a Siemens digital PBX phone. So this is not like your average house phone where you can plug it into the wall. Although confusingly they do give you a BT connector for it. This is designed to be used with the Siemens, uh, I believe Siemens High Path Telephone Exchange. Um, it is a completely digital unit. If you plug this into an analog phone, non phone line, it will do nothing. Now with these, um, the term digital really only extends to how this process processes voice. It's very much an analog switching system behind it. It's just switching digital signals through analog methods. Um, what we're doing is we're converting our voice to a PCM data stream here. We're producing a data stream from our keypad. We're receiving a data stream for our ear earpiece and we're receiving a data stream for our um, LCD. So in some respects, it's more like a terminal. But we're not doing anything funky like SIP or anything like that with this. So we will take this apart. No, we won't because I'm going to need to go and get some different screwdrivers, which I will do now. And we're back. Oh, I really need to do something with this workbench. There we go. We want that screwed. Let's just take this out. Problem solved. So in the broader sense of the thing, the word, they are digital, um, but we're not really doing quite the same level of processing that say something like free PBX or an IP phone does. Although arguably you could say they're not doing much different from this. How far down is that? Bollocks. Yeah, you could say that, you know, they're not doing much more than this, but obviously IP owns a lot more. IP, obviously IP has a lot more going on. You've got different codecs, you've got more flexibility. You've got smartphones now with touchscreens and other things. And all your switching is being done in software. Um, as I say, these are still mostly analog in nature. Um, your voice is being turned into a PCM stream and converted back to analog in the uh, telephone exchange as it goes onto the line or converted to a codec that happens to work over the ITM lines that these generally support. But they're still really not a million miles away from a standard analog phone. We're going to need a reasonable force, have we missed a screw? I don't think we have. That's the fun time, the fun bit where plastic clips start re-clipping themselves as fast as you're undoing. Uh, sorry, I'm, I know I'm off screen, but it's just trying to work out how to get into this. I don't see any hidden screws. This requires a bit more force than we appear to be hinged some way or form on the bottom. So there's your plastic base, nothing in there. That missed. Oh, we have leaky aluminium caps. Who doesn't like a leaky aluminium cap? So, so with the older phones that I have taken apart on this sort of vein, it's been quite clear what's going on inside them but I suspect this one is going to be largely down to this large custom ASIC here which means we're not really going to be doing a lot gonna come out now. so we have one board there that has our keypad on now there's really not a lot to this we have our LCD there we'll look at that LCD because one of the things that might be worth saving in here is that LCD module Uh, we have fairly bog standard, cheap and cheerful rubber membrane pad. The speakers in these are normally not bad. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure I can be bothered. We have what looks like an illumination here. So that illuminates 
from the bottom of the earpiece. Direct hit. So what have we got on this side? Well, we've got all of our interface for our keys. Uh, we have some spark gaps here, which will be to do with all the isolation on the line here. We have a headset adapter, which is, again, you can see the isolation between the incoming phone line and everything else, and you'll see it on the back as well. You can't quite see it because of the white silk screen, but everything is isolated. And yeah, we have an ASIC, that's it. So we have an Infineon part there, a PSB 21493H, and curiously, I'd like to say that's RAM, but I don't believe it is. Uh, looking at that part number, SZ9AL004D90MF102, I would say that's memory of some kind, possibly EEPROM. But well, that was disappointing, and I hoped there would be something interesting in here, but there really isn't. So that can go in the bin as well. Incidentally, that bin is about eight foot behind me, and I've managed to hit it every time so far today. So how do we get into this? force that's how we get in here so we have a little LCD module here there are only 11 pins there I would still bet this is a Hitachi module with a Hitachi module's 4-bit access is possible um, to be fair if you're doing this at 8-bit that only leaves you with three pins that's not really enough there is a PCB number there, VLG1021, and we have a date of 2001. Or do we? We have a date of 2009 there. Who knows? But yeah, that's not really exciting. It's a nice little display module, and it is quite obviously a dot matrix. I don't know that you'll see there. So that is potentially usable. A 4-bit LCD like that, a nice, clear, simple module, is certainly something that could be used in a project. And unfortunately, that uh, cover is quite scarred, but it is what it is. There you go. Anyway, that was distinctly unimpressive. Take care.